Hey guys, and welcome back to part two of Scarface. Last episode, we began our journey you want to with the collapse of our glorious empire what happened? and all that we have. And after making a few deals with former friends and allies, I come to talk to you first because you know what's going on. We were able to restore our mansion back to its former glory, set up a bank account, and buy our first business. How about I pay you in cash? You work for me, and we go straight to the top. All this taking over a nice chunk of Little Havana. But is it enough? No. That's right, with Gasper and the Diaz brothers' control slipping from the area, it was time to sever the connection for good, and finally get us some proper Montana territory. With this in mind, using the cash we had made from all our gang war missions, I spoke with the manager of Oakley Drive-In, our next potential business venture. Welcome to my little patch of paradise, sir. I mean, they have hot dogs, and pizza, and popcorn, and snacks, and pizza. This place has everything. And according to the manager, it also has punk-ass kids that drive around aimlessly, ramming you and shooting you until you eventually die in horrific explosion. You gotta deal with these punk-ass kids. Kids. I think I killed two kids. Fuck that! <laughs> these are totally not kids. Kids. Did you get in there or what? Whatever. With the Diaz car gang of kids arriving on you, it was time for a showdown. Doing my best to get a grip on the shooting controls while driving was a bit of a clumsy experience. Shooting my 12 gauge out the window. Most of these guys were relatively easy to eliminate, especially if you just don't move and shoot them when they drive by. But uh, this cannot be as easily said for their leader, as after all the grunts are killed, he arrives in outrageous form in his mounted 50 cal, where standing still is the opposite of what you should do. Retreating back to the diner for supplies and to regroup, I knew I had to get my hands on another vehicle. Yet, with nothing around and being unable to steal one, I was going to have to give this one another go. <laughs> I definitely remember this mission, and it's just as terrible as I remember it. In a good way. Determined to increase our rate of fire to more than 10 rounds per minute, I purchased an arms dealer and drove back to the mansion to pick up our new upgraded SMG. There. Now we're ready. Oh shit, bad idea, man. Why? Arriving back at the drive-in, the Diaz gang smelled our presence and initiated their attack. Using a slightly different approach of ramming them head-on, I was able to dispatch practically all the gang members without even losing my car this time. Oh, and this new miracle machine is already proving its worth. Totally worth it. And seeing as she was low on life, and the gang leader just arrived, it was time for a noble sacrifice. Now you're Oh, you asshole. Get back here. With no time to mourn, I stole another, and used what I'd learned to... Stun him? Hello. Alright, I guess we did it. What an abrupt conclusion. <laughs> Just ended. Oh well. The drive-in is ours. It's all yours now. I can't wait to see what we start bringing in. Money in the bank. Not wasting any time, I headed over to the Cabana Cigar Store, our next possible purchasing option, and tried to pull my money-making moves on the owner. I bought your store. Which kind of worked except for the letter-fetching boat mission that was required before purchasing. Can't sell you this store unless I get my papers back. My accountant ran off with a local thug, and together they're trying to take over the cigar market. Literally had to chase this chick as she, one by one, dropped letters from her boat. <laughs> like, why? <sighs> we got a lot of work to do, so... Look, guys, I know all these are going to have their own missions attached to them. But for like the love of God, can one of them be available for purchase without any stipulations? I mean, you own a cigar shop. Your life can't be that complicated. Okay, okay, hey, all right. <sighs> I don't know. It was fun. Just stupid. 
Where'd you go? <laughs> With the cigar store and the drive-in now under our control... It's all yours now. I used some extra cash to hire henchmen and security systems at all our current properties. We don't want to lose what we already have. For a second time. Feeling secure about our current state of affairs, I visited the Babylon Club for a little R&R. &R. Rest in reflection. Is this it? Is this what it's all about? Struggling with all these inner demons, I was once again getting flashbacks to the film. I thought this seemed familiar. Oh yeah. Fuck. Just like that, we were ambushed. Just like the movie. Tearing through the competition, leaving most dead at the door. Fucking funnel these bitches. I began to wonder who could be behind the attack. Seeing as this is Frank's M.O. But we all know where he is. Thinking Gasper was behind this attack, one of the men responsible informs me otherwise. The Diaz brothers send their regards. I hope they treated your mama well. Oh, you sons of bitches. That's a low blow. And right when I was reflecting on my decisions, I had no time. <laughs> Fuck this guy. It's time for revenge. These Diaz assholes are gonna pay. Sorry! Wasting zero time, we arrived at Diaz Motors for a little revenge. Starting my chainsaw again <laughs> for some reason. I had that covered already. Confronting Alfonso, one of the Diaz brothers, he flees like a coward as we began our brutal massacre in the warehouse. One by one. No, seriously. One by one, like they wanted to die. We slashed and cut our way through the competition. <gasps> Horrific. Raging the fuck out to catch up with Alfonso, he speeds off in his Corvette, initiating a massive car chase that quickly wore off into an endless chase to nowhere. Well, not endless, but <laughs> felt like it. Like it would be really cool if these guys had a plan besides like cowering behind their henchmen. Like we're out here on the streets getting shit done. Who else is doing that? No one. Who put this thing together? Me. That's who. Well, with Alfonso dead from whatever that was. It was obvious. Reflection time had ended. And action time had begun. Selling the drugs we had obtained and not getting narked on. <laughs> Wait, what? What? I. We mercilessly reminded everyone who's boss. Fuck. Who, guys? Things were going good. Yet there was still one thing keeping us from complete control over Little Havana. The storehouse. A means of distribution. Now you're talking, man, that I like. And storage. Hell yes. Let's see, motherfuckers. Shark. Having to protect their drug trucks while they try to blow them up was great and confusing. Apparently my entire campaign fails if their trucks are destroyed. Like, I don't get it. What about this has anything to do with me owning this building? <laughs> After somehow managing to eliminate most of the men without harming the trucks, okay. reinforcements arrive, screwing me over at the last second, and I was still fucking inside. Well, god damn it, I just made it in here. Oh, well. I beat it with one. Fuck it. The storehouse is out. So is the rest of Little Havana. Deciding to give this distribution thing a try, I took the only key we had and drove it to our drive-in theater. For a cool 63 G's. Which is a good thing, cause I got an itching to spend some money. Speeding back to the mansion, I went upstairs to our office to customize this shit. Buying a jukebox, cigar case, and liquor cabinet we blew through a few grand, and my sanity, because this placement mechanics fucking sucks ass. Too close to the wall? Fuck! <laughs> I 
God damn it! I'll show you who you're fucking with! This is pretty cool and all, but uh, it's pretty pointless when you find out you can't even use them. So, you know, here's 55 Gs for your flat screen. <laughs> Unfortunately, not feeling too satisfied with our purchases, though it does tie the room together pretty well. I turn to a more usable product. Ooh, this looks nice. I love this country, man. Perfect. And what's this? We ranked up. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yet, before we could see what we had obtained for ourselves, we receive a phone call from Sosa. Hello? You've got balls, Tony. As a matter of fact, we do. Don't forget that it was Alejandro Sosa that made you, Tony. Me. I don't give a fuck. And as if that wasn't enough, someone else calls in regards to our missing wife. Tony Montana. Hey, what the fuck is this? How'd you get my number? Trying to arrange a meeting with our lawyer, Sheffield. My name is Pablo. I work for your lawyer, Sheffield. He asked me to track you down because he's got some important information for you. This shit is fishy. <laughs> oh yeah, Mr. Montana. We think we may know. Where your wife is, Elvira. Elvi? You sure? Where? Where is she? Meet me in the last report. We can talk in person. Pablo? Hey, coño! Coño, what the fuck? Expecting a trap, I loaded up on guns and ammo. Like the AK. I will take it. And called in our new speedboat. Yeah, it's Tony. Bring my boat and make it quick, man. That was quick. Oh, yeah. Things fucking awesome. And just what we need. They won't expect us by sea. Arriving near our supposed meeting with Sheffield, I took the boat as close as I could and went in expecting a conflict. Only to be taken away to another location by this Pablo fella. Where are we going? Great question, but by the way, Pobs is driving? No clue. You going off road, bud? But, just like I thought, pulling into Freedom Town, this was a trap. And one we were going to have to fight our way out of. Without any of my well-prepared shit. I'm meeting with my lawyer and you need to take my guns? It's BS. I saw this shit coming. Why the fuck don't Sheffield call me himself? Exactly. Like, this is red flag territory, Tony. Should have caught this shit. Well, guys, I hope you all enjoyed part two of Scarface. This was a pretty dramatic episode. Just when I thought the worst was behind us, it wasn't. It is still very much ahead of us. Somebody loves us. Yet... With Little Havana 100% secure in every way, progress is being made. So thank you guys so much for all the love and support. It really does mean a lot and helps me make this content. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for part three, where we will hopefully survive our completely obvious trap situation. Pablo, is it Montana? Oh yeah. Ugh, this is pretty dumb. <laughs> And as always, thanks for watching.